From 2015, it is now confirmed that Ukraine was complicit with the downing of M817. What is not known is Washington's contribution to the tragedy. It looks like a black ops sting gone bad, a cynical sacrifice of civilian life to make a political point. It was known that rebels fired the missile, but what is not known or even asked is what the rebels thought they were doing. Clearly they were being monitored by Ukraine, who provided circumstantial evidence regarding Russian telecommunications immediately. But the plane was targeted after two other military planes had been down the previous two days days. Ukraine was at war in the air, and instead of giving a warning to domestic carriers, she chose to sacrifice a civilian carrier for personal gain. Ukraine's government was illegitimate, but put in with smoke and mirrors against popular will which favored Russia. The result was the loss of dockyards and then civil war, and Washington are part of the mix. It is hard to believe that Ukraine could have conceived this disaster on their own. We now know from footage that Ukraine separatists expected to find a Ukraine military craft when they found the passenger transport. Clearly, it was a black ops sting, and Ukraine could not profit from it. Neither should Washington. It is part and parcel with Obama's regional foreign policy. A new Cold War started by Obama, which will allow regional bullies like China and Russia to slap down smaller sovereign nations used as pawns in a great game. Identity politics, where race, religion, and gender are chosen, if one focuses on what is meant by that thought bubble, one should be enraged. There is racial diversity. That does not mean race is a choice. Race should never be a state consideration. Race need not be defined. Those insisting on it are apartheid supporters. Remember when the left opposed apartheid? As for gender being chosen, that is best left to the idle rich. Planned parenting exploits dead fetuses. Selling parts for profit, suggesting late-term abor abortion so that parts are developed for sale. Have ethicists been so divorced from morals? Q and A hide from behind a child they exploited. A ten-year-old coached by parents with ABC encouragement to ask a highly politicized question on national TV. How will they explain it to their friends? Sadly, their teachers may applaud it, but it is unprofessional, damaging, and detrimental to wider society that it happened. What about a child holding a severed head? ALP face allegations regarding expenses. Senator Polly from Tasmania has apparently taken luxury rides worth, uh, worth over $20,000. Will the ALP pay back those legitimate expenses too? Right-wing extremists said to be as deadly as jihadis. However, not by objective measures. Right-wingers have been responsible for arguing and race-baiting. They have not been party to rape, murder, torture, beheading, and terrorism, or stoning, dismemberment, female genital mutilation, or pedophilia. The garden-variety right-winger might use the same words as neo-Nazis and have no understanding of history or culture or basic reasoning, and they probably like to drink too much and think very little, but really, they are disgusting, but not like jihadis. Consider reporting from Chattanooga, where an apparent jihadist assaulted two defense bases before being killed by police. ALP being led by Plibersek to the left. ALP foreign policy waters down the Australian-US alliance in favor of China. It's kind uh, of fits with Obama's Cold War regional policy vision, but is in fact a bad move for the entire region. Next week, ALP heavyweights are going to shift policy to legitimate terrorist state for Palestine.